Good morning, George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. Let's build Mike's mobile library. In today's session, we're going to learn how to build an interface that works the way a main form sub form interface works in an access application. The one side table is bound to or it provides the items for one part of our interface and the many side items provide the record source or the items for the other portion of our interface. In Power Apps, we don't really have main form subforms because forms are a different kind of object. Instead, we're using nested galleries. There is an outer gallery and an inner gallery. The outer gallery forms the same function as the main form in our access interface. And the inner gallery, or the nested gallery, performs the same function as our subform. Let's learn how that works. We've opened our development copy of Mike's Mobile Library in the Microsoft 365 development environment for Power Apps. And I've started the application so we can quickly move into it. I'm going to go to the publication screen and select a publication which I know has multiple authors associated with it. I'll filter on the name that brings up Professional Access 2013 Programming. We'll edit that publication. And as you can see on the right side of our edit screen, we have added the nested galleries we need to display the publication and its co-authors. There are two galleries here, the outer gallery, the items for which are it, the publications, and the inner gallery, the item for which are the authors or co-authors for any given publication. One to many relationship between those two sets of records and those two tables. And the method we use to create an interface to display that is the nested gallery with an outer and an inner gallery. Let's see how that works. Okay, before we look at the workings of the interface, let's revisit the tables behind it. There are three tables involved because this is a many-to-many -many relationship. We have many authors and many publications. One author can create or write or produce many publications, and each publication can be created by co-authors, one or more co-authors. So let's start with the publication creator table. It is filtered down to publication ID 4, which is the one we're looking at here. Uh, it has five, four creators or co-authors associated with it. The creator table is a list of all of the creators who have contributed materials. Some of the creators on this list have written two or more books or contributed to two or more books that I have cataloged so far. And the third table is the publication table. Publication table consists of a title, which is the name of the publication, publication ID, and other fields which provide the attributes for that record. The values we're interested in are the publication ID, and if we filter this list on professional access programming, You can see that we are interested in publication ID number four, which is the one we looked at. Here in our publication creator table, publication ID four has four co-authors and the four co-authors five, nine, eight, and 10 come from the creator table 
uh, sort this off in ascending order so it'll be easier to find. We're looking for 5, which is me, 8, 9, and 10. So that's the source of the records in our nested galleries. Again, the outer gallery contains the records or has as its item source the records from the junction table, publication ID. The inner gallery has as its items or its record source the records from the creator ID in this table. Slightly different from what we might uh, see in a access main form subform where the uh, subform is editable. Because we're working in this environment, our subform is not going to be editable, but it does the job of displaying our items. So let's go back and look at that. Okay, what we do is we start with the invisible property, excuse me, I always call them properties, it's the invisible action or event of the screen. When the screen first appears, we're going to clear collect a collection. That collection will be called call publication by author, and it's based on the publication creator table. And then we set this variable. That's not important for what we're doing right here. When we're done with this action, we have a collection which contains all of the records from the publication creator table. And as we've seen before uh, with other SharePoint lists, we get a lot of noise. We're only really interested in uh, some of the fields, the uh, creator ID for one, the ID of the, of the uh, record itself. There's the publication ID. Uh, these are both in themselves records reflecting the flag, fact that they come from other tables. But there's a lot of other noise that we don't really need. We only really need those two, but uh, we get them as a bonus. So when we get to the display of this particular publication, we have available a collection. That collection is used in the outer gallery. So let's select the outer gallery. And this is the one which uh, provides the one side part of our interface. The one side being the publication. The way we get there is we use that p collection we just created and then we manipulate it in order to provide a grouped set of author IDs associated with that publication, with each publication, I should say each publication, because the full set encompasses all of them. Again, our publication by Arthur, author collection. We add two columns to it, and these are the columns we use for our grouping, the publication ID group and the author ID group. The publication ID group comes from the publication ID, and the author ID group comes from the creator ID. Then we group that set of records in this new collection by publication ID group and we generate as our subset or the grouped authors, we call that author list. You can read about group by or look up videos about the group by process uh, and get a more detailed explanation. I will just simply repeat it quickly so that you can kind of get a picture of what we're doing. We're taking the publication by creator collection that we generate when the form screen becomes visible. We add two columns to it. The first one is simply the publication ID value a second time, this time identified as publication ID group, and then the same for the creator, 
ID. We call that author ID group. And then when that changed collection is available, we have a table, which is a list of authors and a publication ID. And that's the result of our group by on this collection with two additional columns. The two additional columns being the list of authors, which is the items associated with that publication, items or creators associated with that publication, and so on. So this is the one we're looking at, publication four. And this table will have the four author IDs in it as author list. Then we're going to filter that by the current publication. Now, we're getting that from the VAR publication, which is what we use to filter this form or this screen. We're filtering publication ID from the group here by the value that is equal to the publication ID of our publication. And when we get through with this, we have a single record with the publication ID that corresponds to the publication we're looking at in the form next to it, and a list of all the authors for that publication. You can see I practiced quite a bit before I finally felt confident enough to explain this to you. That's how it works. That's how it looks. Here is the result. I think we can probably look at some of the uh, layout issues a little more uh, detail, but th those are the highlights of what I wanted to show you. Let's look now at the inner gallery. Its item list is this item, the member, so it's this item, which is the publication, ID 4 in this case. The author list, which pertains to that uh, item, and the author ID group. And it's, not, it's a table, so it will be a table of four elements. Each of the records in that author list then is displayed in a control. Let's see, I need to get is expanded so I can see the authors. And the way we display the author is we look at the creator table. We use the creator ID from the creator table, which corresponds to this author ID group ID. And then we return using the lookup the last name and first name of that author. And you can see there are four of those in this list. Um, rather than dive more deeply into this here, I think what I would prefer to do is refer you to a set of other videos, tutorials, which focus on this same concept and do so in a more detailed fashion. Uh, rather than uh, invest, frankly, a lot more time in our project here. Uh, I'll outsource that part to, to other uh, YouTube creators and let them explain to you more in detail. The upshot of all of this is that now I have, whenever I select a publication for editing, a list of all the authors associated with it. Let's run this really quickly. We'll go back. Uh, we'll unfilter it. We'll pick 1984, edit. This time, whew, that updated really slowly. Did you notice? It brought back the 1984, which corresponds to the publication we're focused on. And there's a single author. If we go back and let's look at one more. We're, let's pick 
Another one which I know has multiple authors. This one has multiple authors as well. And as you can see, uh, there, there, there's a slight delay as the lookups go out and fetch the record, or excuse me, fetch the names that go with those values in that uh, gallery. Okay, let's look at one more aspect of these two galleries, the nested galleries, that makes it possible to do what we're doing here. Uh, let's select the inner gallery. Its layout is a flexible height. This is what allows it to expand to display as many records as are required to handle all of the authors for that particular uh, publication. In this case, there are quite a few. So let's go back and look. Uh, the, the overall layout uh, of the space does not permit it to grow past this limit. But within that inner gallery or the nested gallery, it expands or it, it has a flexible height to allow it to display all of the records. So with that, I think we've covered uh, enough for one session regarding the uh, publication and author's display, the nested galleries, which echoes or, or parallels in some ways the, the use of a main form, sub form with multiple items viewed in an access database. The difference being that we have to uh, go about the process of getting those records into a collection differently. But once you figure that out, you can handle all kinds of uh, many to many and one to many relationships in nested galleries. I hope you like what you have seen so far. If you have, please do subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, provide some feedback in the comments. I'll see you next time.